Over the past three decades, lionfish have taken over marine ecosystems in the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, and the Western Atlantic. These slightly terrifying looking creatures have gone from a popular aquarium fish to a menace that is transforming some ecosystems. But what exactly are lionfish? And how did they get to the Caribbean? How are they affecting these ecosystems? And most importantly, what can we do to stop it? There are 16 species of lionfish found in the world. Overall coloration and body morphology can vary by species, but there are some distinct traits that they all share. Lionfish tend to be around 12 to 15 inches long on average, although you will find some as large as 18 inches in their non-native regions. You'll also notice that they don't exactly look like a lion. Instead, they're covered in stripes, normally either brown, white, or red. They're also infamous for their 18 venomous spines that help them deter predators. You should be wary of these spines as well because they can cause anything from extreme pain to even paralysis. These guys are native to the Indo-Pacific region of the world and can be found throughout the Indian and Pacific Oceans. In their native regions, they are solidly middle of the food chain animals. They eat other fish, and they can also be eaten themselves. Likely for this reason, they are predominantly nocturnal animals that you won't really find out during the day. However, you'll soon find out that things are very different in the Caribbean. Of the 16 species, two, Pteravolitans, or the red lionfish, and Pteramiles, or the aptly named devil firefish, have shown up in the Caribbean and Western Atlantic. But how exactly did they get there? The short answer is no one really knows how this Indo-Pacific animal ended up so far out of its native range. However, the best guess scientists have is that it's related to the aquarium industry. Aquarists love having these animals in their tanks because of their unique looks. And many scientists believe that lionfish may have gotten into the water when people decided they no longer wanted them in their tanks. Rather than returning them or giving them to someone else, they simply released them into the wild. A lionfish was first spotted off the coast of Florida in 1985. Although they got off to a relatively slow start, by the 2000s, their population was growing exponentially. They're even found in the Flower Garden Banks, a marine sanctuary located 100 nautical miles off the coast of Texas. It is believed that lionfish spread so quickly throughout the Caribbean and the Western Atlantic for a few reasons. First, they have no natural predators in this new range. Many would-be predators simply can't venture past the venomous spines. Second, they reproduce year-round. Mature females can produce up to 50,000 eggs every three days for their entire lives. That's a lot of babies. These conditions have led to exponential population growth over the past few decades, and also created some interesting behavioral changes. Caribbean lionfish do not share the nocturnal habits of their Indo-Pacific counterparts, and they can be found at pretty much any time of day. They're also found grouped together more often in the Caribbean. Now don't think that these animals are turning into cows or wolves and developing a herd or pack mentality. Rather, there's just so many lionfish that there really is not enough space for them. They tend not to move much once they find a place to settle and this can result in having as many as 200 lionfish per acre. That's also a lot of lionfish. How has the introduction of lionfish impacted the Caribbean? Lionfish are voracious, generalist predators that'll eat pretty much anything they can put in their mouths. Unsurprisingly, this is leading to dramatic consequences for the local fish populations. Lionfish numbers increased by 40% in some parts of the Bahamas between 2004 and 2010. This rapid increase corresponded with a 65% decrease in the local fish populations. Lionfish have also reduced the recruitment of native fishes. Most fish larvae leave coral reefs until they reach a certain size, at which point they return. However, lionfish populations limit the number of new recruits. One study found that these predators reduce fish recruitment by 79% in just five weeks. 
Although long-term effects of the lionfish on Caribbean ecosystems are still being determined, many conservationists and scientists worry that this invasive animal will have lasting consequences for the region. Although the lionfish have started their takeover, managers and scientists aren't giving up without a fight. Yearly competitions, known as lionfish roundups, award the individual or team who can capture the most animals. Some restaurants have also begun placing lionfish on the menu in an effort to help with the problem. People are also trying some less common ideas, such as hand feeding sharks lionfish to try to teach them to eat them. Many sharks can't eat these lionfish because they can get past the venomous barbs. However, some people raise the concern that it's not a good idea to start associating humans with food by hand feeding sharks. Could be a problem. Grouper may be the safer bet. Research in 2011 found that Caribbean grouper actually eat lionfish. The only difficult thing is that grouper are so overfished in the Caribbean that they don't have a high enough population to significantly counter the lionfish problem. Lionfish may be relatively harmless in their native range, but they are wreaking havoc on ecosystems in the Western Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. So maybe next time you're at a seafood restaurant, forgo the grouper and try some lionfish. Who knows? Maybe it tastes just like chicken.